Hello and welcome everyone. Richard Schneeman here. We are going to be talking about JavaScript right now. If you're familiar with JavaScript, you might be familiar with JavaScript, the good parts. It's a great book and it covers some pretty awesome things about JavaScript. Um, you might also be familiar with JavaScript, the definitive guide, which is going to tell you everything about JavaScript. So coming from a Rubyist point of view, I'm not super in love with JavaScript, but uh, it is pretty standard across a lot of browsers and it has been argued that JavaScript is the um, most common programming language in the world. So um, in general, we use Ruby because it is a server side language. It is very powerful, very easy to read. Um, you know, I think so. I, I love working with Ruby. And um, JavaScript is mostly a client side language. I say mostly, we can also have JavaScript uh, server side frameworks such as Node.js. Um, I've known people who have created some projects with those and, uh, well, it's, if you, if you choose to use JavaScript for your server side language, then, um, you know, that's completely up to you. I prefer Ruby. So, uh, what's a client, you know, this, these are examples of clients. A web browser is a client. So we've got Chrome, Firefox, Safari. Uh, some of you might be using IE. I would highly recommend not using IE, uh, and, you know, so, so we have JavaScript, it's uh, going to do things on our client, we know it's going to be client side programming, but what type of things can JavaScript do? Well, it can send data to a server asynchronously. So we have those really neat pages by Google. Um, so like Google spreadsheets, you can just type in things, and it's going to go ahead and automatically compute values and do things without having to have a page refresh. Um, we, we would call that Ajax, actually. Uh, so that's really neat, and that's powered by JavaScript. Uh, you know, quite a few things. Whenever you type in a comment and you hit submit, and the page doesn't refresh, but the comment just kind of shows up there. You know, that's that's sending data asynchronously uh, to a server. So that's one thing JavaScript's really good at. Another thing it's good at is changing the web page after it's loaded. So we would call this changing a page's DOM. And we haven't talked about the DOM before, but it's pretty important. What is a DOM? Well, the DOM stands for Document Object Model. And it is how computers see nested HTML. So as, um, as the HTML gets sent from your server to a client's computer, finally gets a web browser such as Chrome, uh, this is how it's going to, the computer is going to think about this HTML. So on the left-hand side, I've got some HTML, and on the right-hand side, all right, let's take a look at how the computer thinks about our HTML. On the left-hand side, we've got HTML, which you're hopefully a little bit accustomed to at this point in time, and on the right-hand side, we have what the computer would consider the document object model. So the root is always going to be document, and then underneath that, the child of document in this scenario is gonna be HTML, so we have our HTML tag. If we add another tag inside of that, say the body, then it's going to insert that under HTML because the body is a child of HTML, so HTML would be the body's parent. And, um, you know, I, I actually can, you know, visually when I look at this, I use the indentation to kind of uh, remind me or help remind me of that um, that hierarchy now and that's one reason I like uh, keeping the indentation pretty consistent across HTML uh, definitely helps understanding the DOM all right if I add a unordered list so ul under the body then that's going to be a child of body and I can even add a list item inside of that unordered list and then finally we're going to have a a text node within that list item. So the, the text high um, is actually going to be inside of that. So, all right, moving on. Um, we, if we put another list item, then we have more text, then uh, that is going to show up under our other list item. And notice that the, our two list items are actually the same indentation on the left, and on the right, they are on, on uh, plane with one another. So they are actually siblings. Um, if we, but if, if we look at high and ho, they wouldn't, wouldn't be considered, even though they're the same level of indentation, they wouldn't be considered direct siblings, um, because they don't have the same parent. Uh, so we're going to use those uh, three pieces of terminology, parent, child, and sibling. Um, then if we add a paragraph tag under our unordered list, our UL, then that will be a sibling of UL. 
And if we add a little piece of text under uh, our p tag, then it's going to show up as neighbor. So uh, this is on the left again how we you know we actually build HTML, and then on the right it is how our computer is going to open and interpret that. This is how it understands the relationship between these th uh, the three different, uh, the parent, the child, and siblings. So a lot of people will say that the DOM is like an HTML tree. If you're familiar with computer science and you have a computer science background, it's very much like a computer science tree that we would talk, talk about. It is not very much like a tree that has leaves. Uh, I've seen people explain this, and actually some do it fairly well, but honestly, to me, it's a little bit more confusing than it's worth. So uh, let's manipulate the DOM with JavaScript and jQuery. Uh, so jQuery is a JavaScript library. Most of the time that, we're, that I personally use JavaScript, I am using jQuery. It was written in, in JavaScript. Uh, if you want to get a hold and add jQuery to your website, you can just link to the Google CDN. So you, um, the way we link to an external piece of JavaScript, we just say script uh, type equals text slash JavaScript, and then our add our, in our source. In this case, src is equal to ajax.googleapis.com slash ajax slash lib slash jQuery, and we're using version 1.7.2 slash jQuery.min.js. That was kind of a mouthful. Uh, by default, jQuery is included with Rails, which is really, uh, really nice. And it's also convenient that since everyone's using jQuery, um, we can have a lot of uh, mindshare and tutorials online that all use jQuery. So everyone, um, right now, if you can, open Chrome. Hopefully, maybe you're already using Chrome or maybe a new tab. And then I want you to go visit heroku.com. Once you are at heroku.com, I want you to right click and go to inspect element. Then select console. And you should see something like this. I'm going to go ahead and switch to my browser. All right, so I'm going to visit heroku.com. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to inspect element. And um, I'm looking for console. So here we are, we are actually in the JavaScript console, and we can do anything here that uh, that JavaScript can do. So you know we can do one plus one, and we get two. So we, you know we are in a fully featured programming language. Now, if you were to inspect the source of this uh, the HTML on the page, you'll actually see that Heroku is uh, is using and already has uh, jQuery enabled on its page, so we don't have to do anything to get it there. Um, if you want to see for, for certain, you can type in the dollar sign, which is the, the jQuery object, and uh, you should get a response back that kind of looks like this. So what we're going to be doing with this is actually selecting our body. Um, so the, the body is a tag inside of our HTML tag. So if we do dollar sign and then parens and then a string of body inside of those parens and then hit enter, you're going to see that we actually have, at this point in time, if I select it, it's, you know, it highlights everything on the page. So um, here we actually have, uh, I can make that a little bigger, here we have everything on the page, and, you know, I can even expand this if I wanted to and see that, oh, you know, the, the body element actually encompasses all of those other elements underneath it. So it, a parent brings with it all of its children. Uh, jQuery has quite a few different things that we can do once we have an element. So uh, one of the, I, I guess, uh, things that I like to do just to make sure I have the element that I, I intended, I will hide it. So I can do dot hide. And you want to make sure to put the, uh, these closing parentheses, even if it doesn't take any arguments, you know, it doesn't take like a one, then it still requires these parentheses. So if we hit hide, then suddenly our entire page uh, just disappears. And we can even see here that it added the style display is none. So right now we just manipulated our DOM. If you wanted to bring that back, then we can just go and do show. So uh, jQuery is pretty flexible, pretty uh, relatively easy once you, once you get the hang of it. And we're going to be doing an exercise on it in a little bit. Um, and again, this, you know, we didn't just hide the heroku.com web page for everyone on the internet. You only hit it on your local computer. Uh, so, so it only happened on your client. Let's, uh, let's go back to the slides and keep on going for just a bit. All right. So we grabbed our body, we hit it, 
and then we were able to show it again all using uh, jQuery, which is uh, pretty neat. Uh, so you just manipulated the DOM. This is kind of kind of what we did. So we used our jQuery selector. Uh, we use this uh, dollar sign and then parentheses and a string of body. And basically, on our left-hand side, we have our HTML. On the right-hand side, we kind of have our um, DOM tree, uh, simulated DOM tree. So whenever we select body, it is we're going to grab the tags body, which is going to correspond to the body element on our DOM tree. Whenever we hide, it's going to hide that body element, but since everything else since ul li the other li the p all of those tags are underneath the body they're all children of that body then they uh they also get hidden you know if you now if we go ahead and show that then since we're now showing the body then all of the items that were hidden because body was hidden now are going to show up so this is just kind of an example of manipulating the DOM with, uh, with jQuery. So I did want to mention that jQuery has CSS-like selectors. If you've used CSS, then this is going to be just kind of, you're going to be like, oh, wow, that's, that's really neat. If you've never used CSS selectors before, then consider this an introduction to CSS selectors. All right, previously we grabbed body. Well, we can grab any different tag we want just by putting it into our selector as a string. So here we have the div tag that we are selecting. So this is going to grab every single piece of HTML that has a div tag on our page. Uh, we can also, if we wanted to say select span, then we would just type in span. So that that's kind of makes sense. It's pretty easy. We just type, we just grab tags by typing in the, the name of that tag. So in this scenario, we are grabbing the span tag. If we add an ID to one of our elements, so we have maybe an ID of primary that we added to our paragraph tag, we can grab that in jQuery by using the pound character. So if we say pound primary, then that means we are going to grab the element that has an ID of primary. And note if you're new to setting using IDs and classes, uh, you can only have every single ID on your page has to be unique and each element can only have one ID. Um, in general, I try to not use IDs because they're pretty restrictive. Um, instead, I tend to use classes. So if you set a class to something, so we have a span and that has a class of bold, then you can use a period character as your selector for classes. So if we say period bold, we are telling jQuery, hey, go ahead and select and bring back everything that has a class of bold, uh, which, um, you know, we, that's what we've done here. Uh, we can also mix and match. So if we wanted to be a little bit more specific and we wanted to say, hey, grab me sp only the span elements, but give me all of the span elements that have a class of bold, then that this is uh, this is combined. So we can we can make this more specific by combining our ID selectors or our class selectors. So you might be asking right now, how exactly do we use JavaScript in our web app? Well, uh, you can just put JavaScript directly into your web page. Uh, so here we've got a JavaScript tag. So uh, we've got the alert function inside of our JavaScript tag, and this is just um, HTML. So our, our browser is going to understand this. When you include this with your HTML, and then you hit refresh on your page, then you are going to see an alert pop up. It's going to look something kind of like this, and it's going to ha have the text inside of it. So um, that at at its heart, a lot of people just say, oh, well, hey, JavaScript is a type of HTML. Well, it's it's technically not, but you do put it inside of your HTML. All right. Um, the next question that commonly gets asked is, how does Ruby talk to JavaScript? And sometimes people want to know, how do we go the other way around? How does JavaScript talk to Ruby? So uh, 
since JavaScript goes just inside of our HTML and we use ERB to build HTML, we can use ERB to build JavaScript. So here we have on the top, we have some ERB. So it's uh, script type equals text slash JavaScript. And then we are going to use the alert function inside of JavaScript. But then we're going to use a ERB escaped string and put in the string of hello world inside of that. So when our ERB gets um, evaluated and then we go ahead and we, uh, we generate HTML, then it is going to turn that into uh, valid HTML. So uh, do notice that we have quotes outside of our ERB tag as well as inside for the, for the string. Because when we evaluate, when you normally would put a hello world tag just inside of your HTML and output it, then it's not going to show up as quote hello world. It's going to just be hello world. So we, we do need to be aware of syntax and, and some limitations. So at, at its heart, uh, we pass data from Ruby to JavaScript simply by building HTML. It's, it's honestly really that simple. All right, uh, the next section we're going to talk about is going to be the Rails asset pipeline. So stay tuned for that.